Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about MySQL HeatWave service on AWS. I'm Nipun Agarwal. I manage the MySQL HeatWave team. And I'm Vincent Lee. I'm a principal member of technical staff. Now, many of you may have heard of MySQL HeatWave. MySQL HeatWave is a fully managed MySQL database offering from Oracle. It is the only MySQL based service which provides a single database for customers to run their transaction processing, analytics, and machine learning workloads. In the past, customers would need to move their data out of MySQL uh, for, to a specialized database for running either analytics or machine learning. With the introduction of MySQL HeatWave, customers don't need multiple databases for running multiple workloads. They can run all their transactional processing, analytics, and machine learning workloads with a single MySQL HeatWave database. The other aspect of MySQL HeatWave is that since the HeatWave is an in-memory query accelerator, which has been built inside the MySQL HeatWave engine, all existing tools and applications which are compatible with MySQL continue to work as is without requiring any change to the application. So it's a fully managed service. It does the things which you would expect a database to do, for instance, backup, provisioning, uh, upgrades, and such. Not only is it a single database for these multiple workloads, but it's very efficient too. And we'll talk more about the performance numbers and such, but it's very fast, both for analytic workloads as well as machine learning in addition to uh, transaction processing. And finally, we have machine learning based automation called MySQL Autopilot, which was introduced last year. And this has been uh, uh, super helpful for customers to reduce the management overhead and also to get good uh, performance with MySQL HeatWave. Ever since we introduced MySQL HeatWave back in November of uh, 2020, we have been steadily adding features to the service. So like last year, we introduced support for MySQL Autopilot, which is a machine learning based automation. We added support for mixed workloads. Earlier this year, we added support for machine learning inside the database. We added support for a larger cluster. So we went up from supporting initially 24 node cluster to 64 node cluster. We added support for compression. So we have been at a steady clip adding uh, new features and capabilities based on the feedback we've been receiving from customers. There has been a very good traction of MySQL HeatWave. We see customers uh, using HeatWave and these customers who are uh, using HeatWave are coming from a variety of um, um, backgrounds. We have customers who are running MySQL on-premise and they're coming to um, OCI to use MySQL HeatWave. But we also have a lot of customers who are migrating from other clouds, most notably AWS, to run their workloads. So many of these customers I'm showing over here were earlier running their production workloads with AWS Aurora or AWS Redshift, and they have migrated to MySQL HeatWave on OCI to leverage the benefits we talked about, like a single database, database which is very efficient. Now, while a lot of customers have migrated from AWS to OCI, to use MySQL HeatWave, there are some customers who are unable to. And there are a variety of reasons why they may be unable to migrate from AWS. One uh, a primary uh, um, reason is the cost of data egress from AWS is very high. So AWS charges a very high fees for uh, moving data out of AWS. And that's why customers who want to migrate their workloads out of AWS find it to be very expensive. The second thing is high latency. So if you have your applications running inside AWS, and you have the database running outside of AWS, because of the architectural limitations of AWS, the latency can be fairly high. The third thing is that the customers themselves may have compliance issues, or they may have just AWS as an approved cloud provider for their enterprise, in which case it means that they can only run their workloads on AWS. And finally, some customers may have integration with other AWS services, which they are unable to migrate. So for a variety of reasons, there may be reasons why customers are not able to move out of AWS, yet they want to benefit from MySQL HeatWave. In order to support 
those customers, we are offering MySQL HeatWave service on AWS. Now, one of the things to note is that in this service, MySQL HeatWave on AWS, the data plane, the control plane, and the console are all running natively inside AWS. So we have optimized the MySQL HeatWave server for the AWS architecture. We have built a brand new control plane, leveraging the various services of AWS so that customers get a good performance at a very good price. And finally, we have built a new console running natively on AWS. When customers want to use MySQL HeatWave on AWS, they uh, have to access cloud.mysql.com. So this is the website they come to. And from this site, cloud.mysql.com, customers can provision a service uh, instance of MySQL HeatWave on AWS. So customers don't need to go to the AWS uh, website to provision HeatWave. They just come to cloud.mysql.com from where they can provision an AWS service. So let's talk about some of these uh, capabilities. So I talked about a new interactive console, which we have built. And what this console provides is that in addition to being able to provision an instance from the console, customers also can interact um, with your schema directly from the console. They have the ability to execute queries and get the results from the console. MySQL Autopilot has also been integrated from the console. We have now support for performance monitoring. Customers can see what is the performance of their cluster or what is the performance of their queries. And finally, we now have support for HeatWave ML from the console. So all of these capabilities are now available, available directly from the console, which makes it a very rich and a seamless experience for customers. The second aspect is that MySQL HeatWave has been optimized for the AWS instance types. So, so note that um, MySQL HeatWave on OCI has been optimized for the OCI shapes. For the instance of MySQL HeatWave, which is running on AWS, we have optimized that instance for the AWS instance type so that customers running on AWS get the best performance on AWS and customers running on OCI get the best performance with MySQL HeatWave running on OCI. Right? So MySQL HeatWave has been optimized for both the cloud architectures depending upon where the service is being run. So what is interesting is that, and this is a four terabyte TPCH workload, the performance of HeatWave in AWS is 20 times faster than Redshift. It is 16 times faster than Snowflake and uh, Google BigQuery, and it is five times faster than Azure Synapse. Okay. So we have all the capabilities we talked about, uh, MySQL HeatWave, a single database which can be used for multiple workloads. There is no need for customers to move the data across various services. Yet this single database is faster for analytic workloads than the best of the breed analytic offerings. So this is performance. Now let's look at price performance because at the end of the day, that's something which really matters to customers in the cloud. What is very intriguing is that even for price performance, MySQL HeatWave is much better than Redshift, Snowflake, Google BigQuery, or Synapse. So what is very intriguing is the 7x uh, uh, better price performance of HeatWave over Redshift. So MySQL HeatWave is not only faster and offers better price performance compared to Redshift on OCI, but it provides better performance and better price performance compared to Redshift even when HeatWave is running on AWS. So this provides a very compelling, MySQL HeatWave in AWS provides a very compelling alternative to customers who are running a combination of Aurora and Redshift or just Redshift to be able to migrate to HeatWave because with HeatWave, they will get a lot more capabilities uh, which are all running inside the database. They're going to be faster and it's going to cost them less. Now, one of the things which I mentioned is support for in-database machine learning in MySQL HeatWave was introduced earlier this year. And what uh, HeatWave ML provides is a mechanism by which customers get a fully automated way of training their models. So the customers specify their data set and the task, whether they want support for classification or regression, and the system automatically trains a model 
with the best algorithm, best features, best hyperparameters, and uh, adds an explainer, either a model explainer or a prediction explainer. And this is fully automated. In addition to that, the performance of HeatWave ML is 25 times faster than Redshift ML for training. So usually for any machine learning workloads, training is uh, the biggest chunk of the time. And by having the training be 25 times faster, it means that customers can train their models more frequently. As the data changes, they can keep their models uh, retrained more frequently. So it's fully automated, HeatWave It is much faster and it is offered at no additional cost because customers can run HeatWave ML on the existing HeatWave cluster. However, with Redshift ML, customers need to pay for the underlying service which is invoked with the SageMaker. So with Redshift ML, customers don't get the training inside Redshift. The training is done by sending the data to SageMaker. That's where the training is done. The model is trained in SageMaker. So customers incur not only the cost and the overhead and the insecurity of uh, communicating with multiple services, but also additional cost. And the performance um, with Redshift ML is 25 times uh, poorer. The next capability which I want to talk about is MySQL Autopilot. MySQL Autopilot provides machine learning based automation to MySQL customers. And the benefit is that as customers run more queries, more workloads on the system, the system learns from the previous queries and does a better job for the future operations. And the second aspect is that this is workload aware. So based on the workload, the system determines what is going to be, for instance, the best in-memory partitioning key or what is going to be the best encoding. So we introduced a number of capabilities in MySQL Autopilot last year. And what we have now done is that we have enhanced MySQL Autopilot with, uh, for OLTP. So we have added two new capabilities, auto shape prediction and auto thread pulling, which I'm going to talk about. So if you take the, if you look at the diagram on the left hand side, typically if you have a system uh, which uh, with the high level of concurrency, there are some transactions which will get executed, but a lot of the other transactions end up in a block state because there could be some contention with respect to the resources. What auto thread pulling does is that it provides workload aware admission control. So either the transactions are executing as shown in green or the transactions are waiting as shown in yellow. So there's a very disciplined way of execution. And the impact of this is that it leads to a significantly higher throughput and a throughput which is steady in spite of the concurrency increasing. So what is shown in the blue line is the throughput of, this, of Aurora. And this is when the data is small and it fits in the buffer pool. The red line is MySQL heatwave, and this is a TPCC workload. You can see at high degrees of concurrency, the throughput of heatwave is much higher, about 10 times higher. And the second aspect is that the throughput is steady. So what that means is that customers are not penalized if they have high concurrency in the system. Unlike the case of Aurora, when there's a big penalty and the throughput uh, uh, drops significantly. So in the case of Aurora, customers have to really provision a lot of gear, a lot of cores ahead of time because they can't predict what the workload would be. Whereas with HeatFit, there's no degradation in the throughput, even when the uh, concurrency is fairly high. The second capability which you have added is auto shape prediction. Um, what we want to provide the users is an automated way by which based on the workload, the system is able to predict what is gonna be the best instance type or the best shape for that workload to provide the best performance. So these are some examples of some benchmarks we have run. And what you can see is that um, over a period of time, the system looks at the queries and then makes a prediction or a determination as to what is the optimal configuration or the optimal instance type for which the customers are going to get the best performance. So for the first four workloads, the system recommends that the user upsize to a larger shape and by doing so, you can see that there's an improvement in the throughput. In the next four uh, workloads, the system recommends a downsize 
that they want to, the system recommends that the user goes from a system with uh, eight CPUs down to four CPUs. And by doing so, you can see that there is no um, noticeable negative impact to the throughput. So the customer is able to downsize to a smaller shape without any degradation to their throughput. So the custom, basically what it does is it saves customers money because they can uh, downgrade without any impact to performance. So what uh, Autopilot is essentially helping customers do is to recommend a shape which is going to provide them the best performance at the least cost. In addition, these capabilities, we have uh, enhanced the MySQL Autopilot so that um, MySQL Autopilot now has an ensemble of models which are optimized not just for memory, but for runtime. And by doing so, in many of the cases, we see a significant improvement in the query performance. Okay, so I talked about uh, performance in three contexts, analytics, machine learning, and transaction processing. In addition to performance, we have added a bunch of security differentiators um, in the service. Examples are support for data masking, Customers get the capability to do data masking inside the server. So if there's a column which you don't uh, want to be sent to the client, it can be masked in the server. We have support for uh, SQL firewall. So statements which have not been seen before can be blocked or can be flagged, uh, which can provide a level of security. We have support for asymmetric encryption in the server. In addition to these capabilities, uh, one of the things to note is that MySQL Heatwave, both on AWS as well as on OCI, is always on the latest version of the MySQL database. And one of the benefits of that is not only do the customers get to use the latest and the greatest features in the server, but we are always patching the server with the critical security fixes. So what customers can be assured of is that they're using MySQL Heatwave, that they're always getting the latest security patches in the service. One of the other things which um, we got a lot of feedback from is that customers who run uh, OLTP workloads have database sizes which are small. So in addition to um, a large shape, uh, which we had for MySQL Heatwave, we are now introducing a smaller shape. So there are two shapes which are going to be available to customers on AWS. A large shape, which is 256 gigabytes, which can process about 400 gigabyte of uh, workload and a 16 gigabyte shape. So 1 16th the size and 1 16th the cost. And this can process about 25 gigabyte um, of workload. So now this gives customers the capability to be able to leverage MySQL Heatwave when the data sizes are small without having to pay a higher cost for the larger uh, shape size. And with this, I'm gonna turn it over to Vincent for a demo of the service. Yes, thank you, Nathan. So this is the demo of the AWS console. Uh, so right now we're just going to log in, uh, and this is going to be the one-stop shop, right, for all of your needs on um, running your queries, looking at your databases, and provisioning any resources that you may like. And so once we're logged in, uh, we're going to land into the jump page. So this page has the MySQL database and the uh, HeatWave uh, jump page, and and from here we can basically create a MySQL database. We have already done that. So we're just going to jump right ahead and create the HeatWave cluster. And so uh, for the HeatWave cluster, we want to show off in the next uh, few segments that we have this autopilot feature that would help you estimate the size of how big this cluster should be based on the data that we've already loaded into MySQL database. And so right now we have one terabyte of data, uh, TPCH, uh, loaded into MySQL. And now uh, we've seen that like this is the estimates of the sizes. Uh, how many rows uh, based off what uh, we have. And uh, we could essentially see that uh, autopilot suggests four heat rate nodes. Um, and this is based on the size of data. So if we were to you know, turn off one of the columns, we say if we don't need this column, then it would adaptively adjust its estimates. And so with this, you know, we could provision the optimal size for your needs. And so it also has a checking of the data and it would see like if there's any particular data, it, it isn't clean or it doesn't have uh, some issues, it would actually show you a warning about those. 
Okay, so now it's been provisioned and we could go into uh, this page which will show you all the gateway clusters that you have and DB systems. And from here, you could look up the configuration, the host names, how to connect to them, the IP addresses associated with them, the ports that you need to use. And then from there, we could connect to this database using that information and run directly within the console a query against this database uh, using Gateway cluster. And so this is uh, uh, the data has been loaded. And so we have a preview of the memory usage based off the data that's inside. And so from here, we could see like particular columns are using how many data and like what are the, the free memory that's available. And so from here, we could also look into a detail view and scroll down and even select particular columns that we don't need. Or let's say that we want to see if, uh, the impact of a particular column on how much we would uh, affect our usage. And so in here, we basically see this is the amount of memory that's being used for this particular column. And so we could choose to unload or load this particular table if we want. And so right now, I'm just going to jump ahead and show you the running of the query. And so we have this feature called the auto plan. And so this is a feature in the MySQL autopilot. And so it would capture statistics of your data and use it to improve the query plan. And so we're just going to run it once. And then we'll see how well it does. And it takes you know, 20 seconds to do the query. So this is a Q3 query from TPCH with some, some modification. And then we're going to just run it again. And this one is for Q18. So the data is essentially uh, the same. But then we're going to, it's going to learn. So uh, my, my, my SQL autopilot, it's going to learn. And it's going to apply the statistics and improve the query on the next run. And so now we're going to see an improvement and see that this this time when running the same QF query, uh, we basically have uh, 10 seconds of run time. And so this is the performance tab. And from, from here, you could look up uh, how well your uh, the cluster is doing. And so you could see the memory cluster utilization. Um, and you could look at dictionary sizes, the data set sizes. And, and you can look up the pool, the buffer pool, and also the, the CPU utilization, how many connections, what's the this operation that's currently doing. But the most interesting thing is the load, workload tab. And so this workload tab will actually show you the most recent queries that were executed. And so you could look in, in time, and you can even zoom in on a particular type of execution that you're interested in. And so once you zoom in on those executions, you could drill down into it and find out what is the exact query that was executed how long it took, uh, how many rows was actually you know, accessed. And so there's different uh, views that you could go into. You could look at the aggregate execution, um, and then you could even click into here to show you what the query is actually doing. Okay. And so now what I'm going to show you is the HeatWave ML. And so this one is uh, the ML feature that we have. And we're going to apply some machine learning to the data we have in the database to do some predictions. And so this particular, uh, we have many different algorithms uh, for your needs, right? So that's listed in the column. And we're going to highlight this one called the banking bank mar marketing data. And so this is the one where banks would call their customers and basically try to advertise products that they may be interested in. And so for this, we could look at model score, explaining the models. And so what we see is that the month and the duration of the call uh, affects the, the success rate of the call. And so these are highly correlated features. And so when we look at the predictions, the first column is the prediction from the ML model, whereas the, the second column is the one that's the actual result. And so what we're going to highlight is a particular one where uh, the duration was very long. We had a very long phone call with them, but they said no to the product. And so why was that? And so uh, right now, the, the parameters for that particular instance is that we called them in May. So we have this thing called the what the feature is like, well, what if we called them in June? Uh, would that make a difference? And then in here, we do see that, yes, it does make a difference. Uh, what we see is that uh, the, the prediction had changed into being a uh, yes, right, from a no to a yes. And then uh, we see within the features uh, that the duration had now, instead of contributing negatively, has contributed to positively to the effect, right? So the month on which you make the call is actually important. And then over on the the, the description on the right, it has a machine learning explainability and it will explain why that is, right? Uh, why there was a change in the prediction outcome. And so this is uh, the, one of the HeatWave uh, ML features that uh, among many others that we have. And so with this, I'll hand it back to you uh, for the rest of the talk. Thank you, Vincent. So as you can see, uh, the MySQL HeatWave service in AWS, it's a fully managed service and the service does 
all the tasks which you would expect a managed database service to do, like patching, backup, upgrades. It's a single database. So as Vincent showed, you can do transactional processing, you can run analytics, you can run machine learning, and there is no change to the MySQL applications. There is no proprietary syntax which is introduced, so standard SQL syntax is like all customers need. Inside the database, we have the capability to train models, to run inference, to explain models. And finally, MySQL Autopilot provides machine learning based automation. And there were a bunch of capabilities which we talked about, like things like um, um, auto query plan improvement. But a MySQL Autopilot provides capability through the entire gamut of the application lifecycle, from provisioning to data management to query execution and then to failure handling. So we have had like many customers use the service and the feedback we have received has been uh, great. And the bottom line is across the board, what we find is customers find using MySQL Heatwave is much simpler because instead of having multiple databases, they can now have a single database for all their queries. The second reason why customers like MySQL Heatwave is because it is significantly faster. So the amount of improvement customers are gonna get is gonna vary is um, based on the uh, uh, complexity of the queries and the data size. If the queries are more complex, the performance improvement is higher. If the data size is larger, the performance improvement is higher. But pretty much across the board, customers always find that there's a significant improvement in performance. And then finally, the third reason customers prefer MySQL Heatwave is the lower cost. So simplicity, better performance, lower cost. And with this um, uh, service, we are also adding a bunch of new security features. So we expect this will provide customers the opportunity to build uh, more secure applications. So to summarize, MySQL Heatwave provides support for transaction processing, analytics, machine learning inside a single database without the need to move data across multiple services. MySQL Autopilot, which provides machine learning based automation has been enhanced for OLTP workloads. Heatwave on AWS provides better performance and better price performance compared to any of the database service we have uh, compared against. We have added several security differentiators uh, with compared to other database services, including Aurora. And finally, MySQL Heatwave is developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL development team. So all the latest improvements which are available in MySQL are always available to MySQL Heatwave customers um, at the same time. Thank you very much and appreciate you taking the time to listen to this talk.